Hi there. Thank you for joining me on this video. I want to talk to you about transitioning an orchid into inorganic media. And there are cases where you kind of go, should I or shouldn't I? Uh, the uncertainty is something I would like to eliminate with this video and talk about when it is not a good time to transition into inorganic media. Regardless of which orchid it is, regardless of climate, depending to a certain degree which orchid you have. So know your orchid, know what you're about to do, know what it likes. Is it a warm to hot grower? Is it intermediate? Is it a cool grower? How much water does it need, etc. And that is why I'm doing this video today, because in many videos I talk about when my orchid grows new roots, I am going to transition. It doesn't matter the time of year. The time of year is not of importance. It's about what the orchid is telling me. And you can see my gorgeous summer bloomer here, my Phalaenopsis pulchra. And I'm holding on to her because we do have a somewhat blustery, breezy day and I don't want to topple her out of the kind of setup I have her in right now. She is very top heavy, as you can see, and only perched in the inner pot with another pot so that I can manage the long, long roots that she has. And you can see all the roots growing. Oh my goodness, I would love to get into this now and transition her, even though I'm heading into winter. But here's the thing. I'm not using heat mats. One, I am not using any kind of heaters indoors when my orchids come inside throughout the winter. That's number two. My minimum temperatures indoors as I head into this time of year will be about 15 degrees Celsius. That is her minimum comfort zone temperature. That's number three. And I want to transition her into LECA and self-watering. LECA has a natural evaporative cooling effect, which will drop the temperature of the root ball even further than 15 degrees Celsius. I always have a margin of about three degrees. My ambient air, if it is 15 degrees, my pot will be about 12 degrees. That is not what this orchid likes at all. So these are the factors why I am not transitioning, even though I see all those gorgeous roots and I'm super, super tempted. So when it comes to the timing of transitioning your orchid, you can see that there is a case by case situation that the time of year can factor in. If you're using all kinds of supplemental gadgets with heat mats and heaters, your climate is much more controlled, but it doesn't always work. I have used heat mats for years throughout the winter, been transitioning orchids throughout the winter also to a degree successfully. But when it comes to summer blooming fowls, they are smart orchids. They understand, I don't care how hot you keep me and around my root ball, if the ambient air doesn't match that, then I am going to protest, object, and my roots are gonna die. So the condition for transitioning throughout this time of year, if you're considering a summer blooming fowl, let's just take the example I have on my table. Make sure that the temperature of your root ball, if, if you're using heat mats, matches your ambient temperature, especially throughout the colder months of the years. They cannot be fooled. I have tried two or three years in a row and I'm telling you, I don't want people to think, well, I've got heat mats, I've got a heater going, everything is fine. They cannot be fooled. The species are very much a different beast than other orchids are that we can somehow fandangle with regards to a controlled climate. So I highly recommend when it comes to certain orchids, even though there is active root growth, I highly recommend to wait until such a time that the season matches their happy place temperature wise. I am not doing a transition per se on the roots that are aerial at this point in time, even though I do leave a bit of water at the base. That for me is more a constant supply of humidity around the leaves of the orchid because at this moment the breeze is very, very dry and I don't have any humidity in the air that this orchid would like. And I'm losing leaves at the base here. And you can see I've, I've lost one down here to the left. I've lost another one. Well, it's going to go, this one on the right. So I'm trying to right now just make sure that she's happy with regards to the humidity. And that is why I leave water in the base. 
I am not pre-transitioning these roots by keeping them in water. Meanwhile, it helps to keep the orchid hydrated, but that is not the case. The thing is that as we go into winter, our air also becomes drier, even in a controlled environment, because we've got heaters going and that immediately drops the humidity factor. She prefers 60 to 65% humidity, if not more. So these are the kind of things that I'm dealing with right now. That is why I've got water in the pot, not because I'm pre-transitioning the roots to accept a wetter environment. It's all about humidity. So I wanted to give you these pointers with regards to orchids when it is not a good time to transition, even though there's roots coming and oh my goodness, I wish, I wish, but I'm gonna hold off on transitioning. I'm going to show you another orchid that I've recently transitioned, despite the fact that we are heading into winter. This is my Dendrobium nobili variety Cooksonianum, just recently transitioned and going against everything I have just told you. But I'm gonna to explain to you why I did transition this orchid as opposed to the tips I just gave you with regards to when not to transition. Sorry if I just moved my head, I'm checking my little pulchra over the corner here. I don't want her to topple over. <laughs> you know, you gotta have a 360 degree vision when it comes to orchids. So anyway, the reason I transitioned my Dendrobium nobili Yes, she was growing fabulous, fabulous roots. And yes, I'm still heading into winter fall, clearly, recording this on the same day. But this nobly is used to cold temperatures. It's going to stay outside in my climate all year round. My temperatures will go down to five degrees Celsius outdoors. And that is a total different ball game with regards to transitioning an orchid that is growing roots, even though we're heading into winter and colder climates. The makeup of the orchid and what its preferences are rank highly when it comes to transitioning what we consider out of season, out of temperature range. But for this orchid, the nobly, it's okay. So please make sure that when you're considering transitioning an orchid, even though it has roots growing and it's the best time, what can you do for it while it is transitioning and what is its happy place? Because for eight months of the year, we're safe with transitioning because of the temperatures. But it comes to three, four months of the year where it's like, well, not such a good idea, way too risky, let it go, take care of the orchid in the media that it is in until everything matches for what the orchid prefers. There are exceptions, and in this case, it's a nobly. So I hope that this video cleared some things up. I hope that it made sense and that it resonates with you. And if you have any questions with regards to an, a specific exception or case that you might have, an orchid you are considering, leave me in the comments below. What hemisphere are you in? Are you growing indoors? Are you growing outdoors? What media are you growing in? And then how do you want to transition her into which kind of media? So these things are really quite important when it comes to this time of year. If you're heading into spring, I would say if you've got new roots, transition. If you're heading into winter and you've got new roots and you're not sure about the type of orchid you would like to transition, give me all that information in the comments below. I'll be able to help you make a decision or at least, at least confirm your thoughts, if nothing else. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a great day on one condition, please, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.